Welcome to the FCICA webinar series. Thank you for joining us. This webinar will be recorded. The recorded session will be housed on the FCICA Member Center and this educational portal. Mark your calendars for these upcoming webinars. Thursday, February 25, join us for Commercial Flooring from Planning to Installation, a Comprehensive Review, presented by Dan Ortiz Bacon, Technical Services Manager, Lidditz Flooring, a Capri Collections Company. On Thursday, March 4, join us for The Risk of High Moisture in Flooring, What You Need to Know, presented by David Stowell, Technical Service Specialist, and Curtis Colgrove, Technical Support with GCP Applied Technologies. And Thursday, March 11, join us for Innovative Solutions for Subfloor Prep and Repair, presented by Brett Hall, Specialty Product Sales Manager, Maxon Corporation. Visit FCICA to view and register for these upcoming webinars. FCICA has recently updated the safety book, Start With Safety. It is available electronically free to members and printed versions are available for $185. The safety book is an essential item to have in your office and on every job site. Purchase it on FCICA's website today. Thank you for joining us for preparing the substrate and installation of flooring with Envirostics Polyacrylic Adhesive. We are pleased to introduce our presenter, Bill Weiss, National Manager with Base King LLC and a CFI Master Installer. Bill started in the flooring industry first as an installer, then as an independent contractor, and then in product development for a national company overseas. Certified as a CF CFI master installer, Bill has been a mentor to those entering the industry. He started his industry teaching career at a local technical college. Later, he became a full-time regional installation manager instructor, traveling throughout the US and Mexico training installers and sales forces on products and techniques. After more than 60 years in the industry, Bill retired from Mannington Mills, but after just a few short months of retirement, Bill was hired as the technical manager for Base King. Welcome, Bill. We're excited to have you. I'm going to turn the controls over to you. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're at. Today we're going to talk about Base King Envirosticks, a new technology that is now starting to sweep the market. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about the products that Base King offers, and then we'll get into the floor prep and installing the Base King Envirosticks products. Uh, We'll go through these slides here. Went through a little too fast. Pardon me, there we go. All right, just a little quick bit about Base King and how we started. Uh, Dennis Schlissner, who started the company, uh, was a commercial installer, mainly in the hospitality industry. And one thing he didn't like to see was carpet base stapled on and all the little dimples that went with it. And so he started experimenting with adhesives on the back of carpet base. And thus the name Base King um, seemed to be fitting at the time and experimented with twin adhesive strips on the back of carpet base. And then as that progressed along and got to be a, a good thing out here in the industry. Then he started experimenting on the back of roll goods and modular products and trying to perfect an adhesive system that would work there. And here we are now, uh, 15 years later, uh, out in the marketplace, uh, doing roll goods and modular products. Move forward here. Uh, just a little bit about our products, uh, our system, the classic system, which is a system that goes up to 96% RH. Uh, ES100 is a system that goes up to 100% RH. 
Uh, we have a barrier and a cushion system, which is a, a pad system that has the EnviroStix adhesive on either one side or both sides. Of course, we've got the carpet base that we make in assorted colors that has the adhesive on the back of it. Um, we also have the adhesive tape and we have a wider tape system that can be put down on the floors uh, on site so that flooring products can be installed uh, on site over the top of them. And we have an application machine called the es to go uh, so that the flooring products can have the adhesive applied on site. I want you to pay attention to this particular slide, uh, and I will probably come back to that at a later point. Uh, we apply the adhesive in our factory down in Dalton, Georgia, on the back of the flooring products. Uh, this way we get uniform coverage on the back of the flooring products, uh, making sure that we're covered from edge to edge and making sure that everything is, is fully bonded to the back of the flooring products. Why would I use EnviroStix? EnviroStix gives me the opportunity to put the floor products into service immediately. And in healthcare, this is very important. Downtime, of course, is the lifeblood of a hospital. If we shut down an emergency department or an operating room, um, that's revenue for the hospital that is lost. So EnviroStix allows us to do that. The gurneys, the hospital beds can be rolled across a uh, freshly installed floor without the concerns of adhesive displacement. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that EnviroStix is so uh, important in these facilities. The other reason is, of course, high moisture. A lot of times in the facilities, especially in, in new construction, there's always a rush to get the job done and get in, get out. Uh, guard to the high moisture that's in the concrete slab. Uh, the EnviroStick system can deal with moisture. We have systems, like I said earlier, that'll go to 100% RH, um, again, allowing you to get in there at an earlier time when that still free water is, is in that concrete slab, uh, allows us to do this. Uh, it's an easier installation system. It's a matter of peeling the release paper off the back. Uh, you're, you're not concerned about trowel size, open time of the adhesive, which is one of the problems with, with bucket glues. Uh, did I have the right trowel this morning? Uh, did I leave enough open time? Did I leave too much open time? With this, it's a matter of pulling the release paper off, putting the floor down just as I would if I had a trowel the adhesive. Uh, the primers that we use along with this system our, our roll-on primers, these primers are meant to neutralize the pH and, and bind the dust that might be on the surface of the, the slab, uh, again, neutralizing everything. Um, it's a cost-effective way of going in and, and mitigating, mitigating uh, the moisture concerns with the slab. Uh, usually, if we go in with the epoxy systems to mitigate slabs, you're talking two, three, four times as much money as the EnviroStix stick system. Now, the reason I point out this slab or picture here is the preparation. Uh, this is a Dyma brush on a regular swing machine that is used to clean off the surface of the concrete. And as the title of this program is, is the prepare, preparation of the slab, um, this machine has diamond tabs on it and it will clean up the surface of that concrete, removing any of the contaminants and paint, et cetera, from the other trades and giving us a nice clean surface on which to bond 
the floor, allowing the primers to bond into the surface also, giving us that good bond. So keep this in mind as we move forward. This is just a, a picture of, of a finished application. Uh, these are some of the products that we can apply the system to, carpet tiles, rubber tiles. We do a lot of rubber tile. You might say, why would you put it on VCT? That's such a cheap commodity product out here. But with VCT, a lot of times they need to get in and get out quick, especially in stores um, where they're in at night uh, replacing a section of the store and they have to put that quick first coat of polish on the floor and move the gondolas back in place so that the store can reopen the next morning. Uh, with the EnviroStick system, it is allowing us to do this. LVT and, and LVP. Again, uh, we're doing a corridor in healthcare. We're working in, in uh, assisted living. It allows us to do an area. Sheet goods, we can do up to two meter wide sheet goods. Uh, again, allows us to get in, get out, uh, there's zero VOCs from the uh, Envirostix adhesive, which is also very important as we're working in occupied spaces. Again, some more areas. As we look at the one picture with all the circles and the insets in it, uh, that's always been a problem if we're trying to trowel adhesive with, with this type of a system. It allows me to lay the field and come back later and cut in the insets or to put the insets down first and scribe the fields around these insets uh, without having to try and, and trowel some adhesive into these tiny spots. Imagine trying to do the little dots in the circle on the circles on the right here. Uh, with trowelled adhesive. It would be an absolute nightmare to do that install. Uh, the little wedge next to that wood. Uh, again, with the uh, EnviroStick system, I can easily leave those areas blank, come back later, and, and cut that piece in, scribe it in. This is just a picture of, of showing uh, putting down the the ESP primer, which is an acrylic primer. It's a ready mix primer. Um, it's a matter of putting it on with just a 3 8 inch napped roller, uh, usually starting away from the wet edge, working back to the wet edge of the primer. Uh, it takes approximately 30 minutes for this primer to dry. Uh, depending on the environment that you're working in. Uh, again, it sometimes dries a lot faster than that, actually. Uh, if you've got a real porous floor and it's temperatures that it should be where you're working, somewhere in that 65 to 70 degree range, uh, which is what most of the flooring manufacturers recommend their products to be installed at. Uh, certainly, it dries up very quickly. Once it's dry to the touch, you're ready to go and start installing. Um, for the most part, one coat is all this necessary for the classic system, as this system um, is warranted to 96% RH. Um, for those of you that, that don't understand the relative humidity of this lab, um, that is just a method of testing the moisture in the concrete slab. Uh, that testing method has taken the industry um, and everybody is relying on that now instead of the, the old calcium chloride test that we used to use. Uh, this is a much more accurate way of finding out what is going on, the sl on within the slab and, and the industry has embraced it. Uh, again, this primer is mainly to bind the dust and, and create a uniform porosity in the slab. It also neutralizes the pH in that slab. I will get to the coverage of that in just a moment. Uh, again, uh, 
this is just a picture showing uh, the release paper being rolled back. Some guys just pulled the release paper off of it and, and wadded up. Um, I like to roll it back, kind of like you were rolling a cigarette paper back. Um, you younger people probably don't know anything about that. Um, this is just a way of, of getting that release paper in a more orderly form. Uh, what I like to do, one of the things that we're not doing with the uh, Enviro sticks is we're not picking up all the dirt and debris that we might have picked up with a trowel. So I like to go ahead of this before I put the flooring down with that foxtail brush that you see in the front of the picture there and perhaps a wide putty knife and give it one more final sweep. Uh, by doing that, any debris that I might have missed along the way, I'm making sure I get that because you're not going to get the opportunity to pull this back and pick up the extra little bit of debris that you missed. And so it's just an extra safeguard. Um, it doesn't take that much longer to do that, even on large jobs, to use that little foxtail and a wide putty knife to catch anything that also sometimes when you're priming you might have missed something when you vacuum the floor before and it gets trapped in the primer this allows you to kind of free that up and get that out of the way now a little trick so that it makes it manageable to work with this is to take a little spray bottle um, like you'd use for putting window cleaner in for instance and putting just plain water, tap water in it, and you miss the floor first before you start rolling the floor down onto it. Um, that's going to allow you to work any air bubbles that you might trap, work them to the edge. Uh, much like if you've ever watched anybody tint windows on a car or watch them put a decal on the side of a vehicle, um, they get the surface wet. And it kind of slows down the bonding process, which, again, allows them to work the bubbles off to the side of the decal or to the window uh, tinting. Does the same process here. It only gives you a short period of work time there. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of work time. It will give you a minute or less of time to kind of pull it back if you need to for repositioning. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have a slide showing that, but uh, again, we do put that in our printed instructions about using the moisture as a, a alternative to give you some additional work time with that. And I'm always free to have that conversation with the installers uh, when, when they're doing the installation. Uh, this just kind of shows uh, the whole envelope of material here uh, with the flooring material on the top layer, the, the dark blue uh, and the Enviro sticks, um, and then the primer being down there in the bottom, uh, and then the substrate on the flooring. Now, that's awful small print. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Uh, as far as the, the coverage uh, of the material that's there. Um, I'll get to that here without making too much noise with my paper. You know, you're going to get about 600 square feet per gallon of the uh, acrylic primer. Uh, again, it's going to depend on the porosity of the floor and and how far I ground down that floor with the Dyma brush. I did have a customer out in California that got really carried away and they went clear down to the aggregate of the concrete. And of course, when you go that far into the concrete, you really are opening that floor up. And of course, it's just like dumping it in a sand pile at that point. There's no need to get that aggressive. All you need to do is just kind of clean that surface up of any of the contaminants that might be there 
from the other trades. We all know that the drywallers leave all kinds of drywall mud on the floor. Um, if you're in a, a remodel situation, you can only scrape so much of that old adhesive off the floor. And now I've got to get the rest of that residual. Uh, keep in mind that old residual adhesive might have been in a, a water-based adhesive, uh, being that there's usually some moisture present in concrete. If you don't get as much of that as humanly possible off the floor, it could emulsify again, and that would be the weak link that would break the bond. So the more you get off, the more assured you're going to be of having a bond that's going to last for that 10 years that our warranty is. So again, the Thyma brush or some similar piece of equipment, uh, no need to shot blast. The only time I would need to shot blast or bead blast a floor would be if there was contaminants from perhaps uh, chemically abating a floor, I might have to get aggressive enough to use that. Chemical abatements on floors, uh, the companies that do these type of abatements say that they leave the floor in a neutral condition, but one never knows how good of a job they did and usually there's residual left in that surface of the floor, and that will break down the Envirostix adhesive as well as most of the uh, bucket-type glues out there. So you're going to have to get more aggressive if you know that there's a history of chemical abatements on the floor. Again, we're going to prep the floor by, by making sure that we've got a good clean surface, that we've got old adhesive removed, old contaminants such as uh, paint and drywall mud, uh, other things that are tracked in by other contractors. Um, need to pay attention to uh, large commercial projects where they have uh, sprinkler systems a lot of times when they bleed out the sprinkler systems the guys that do not catch the oily water that is trapped into those sprinkler heads and they just let it go on the concrete floor pay attention in those areas uh, so that there's none of that oily residue surface of the concrete so you might want to pay a little extra attention uh, to sanding the floor at that point obviously follow all the OSHA approved methods when you're sanding concrete because of the silicate uh, we want to be careful so that we're not contaminating our lungs and the people that work around us again it's a peel and install system using some water uh, to allow us to work any trapped air. Uh, back to the picture of, of the gentleman with it rolled up. It works better if you can roll the floor into the onto the substrate rather than sliding it onto it or picking it up and walking and dropping it on there. Uh, when you do that, you usually trap a lot more air than you do if you roll it out onto the floor. Um, and then of course, rolling it from side to side first and then rolling it the length of it with a hundred pound roller. Uh, it is important to roll it as you go rather than getting it all on the floor and then try to roll it. Because the longer it is laying on the floor, the harder it's going to be to get those bubbles out just as it would be with any of the uh, pressure sensitive type adhesives out there, because this is going to work in the same fashion as a pressure sensitive adhesive. So again, uh, just take your time and use, use good work practices. You're going to fit the floor just exactly as you would if you were using a troweled adhesive. Nothing changes there as far as your installation process. The only thing that you're changing here is you're not trawling adhesive. The adhesive is already on the back of the flooring. 
Now, one thing that you will notice when you roll out the flooring to make your cuts, you're going to notice that it's going to be somewhat wavy. You're going to look at the paper and you're going to go, oh my goodness, what do I have here? It's going to be kind of wrinkly looking on the back of it. And that is because the paper is actually longer than the flooring product itself. That is no problem with that. Uh, the paper, in fact, is probably going to release from the adhesive in a few areas. Again, that is not going to create a problem. Um, the more that you the flooring, the looser that paper will become. Um, if you'll notice also that the flooring product is rolled face in as opposed to being rolled face out, which is, of course, how you would normally get product from your manufacturer. Um, again, that does not hurt it because of the aggressiveness of the adhesive. Um, we have not had any issues with that uh, positive edge curl that you get from rolling products face in. Uh, again, the aggressiveness of the adhesive addresses that. And, and you don't have those issues. If you are a pattern scriber, which there are only a few people that I know that do that anymore, but if you do pattern scribe, um, again, just don't manhandle your product and you can pattern scribe just fine on it. Um, I have not had too many people have large issues with pattern scribing with this. ES100, this is our system that we developed uh, because it seems like more and more we are dealing with uh, that fast track construction. And we're getting into systems where people seem to wanna uh, move this along. They're closing up the buildings later and later and later. Uh, they're not turning on the HVAC like they should be and getting these buildings conditioned. And now the poor installer is under pressure to get in there, get the job done. And, you know, the GC is not necessarily listening to our plight about, you know, the flooring manufacturer says, no, you got to have the HVAC on. You got to have this building conditioned. And, the fact that, you know, that water is not going to start coming out of that concrete until the air is balanced out uh, in that room above it. And all that free water from pouring that concrete is still harbored down in that slab. Not only that, we've got all the uh, curing compound that's been left on top of that slab. And... That's not going away until we get in there to start preparing that slab and and removing it. And when does that happen? The day we come in to start the, doing the installation. So now we're set here, sitting here waiting to do this, and nobody's going to give us time to do it. So we developed the ES100 system. The ES100 system is allowing us to go in there when we have that. 100% RH. And now that people like the Wagner Company have uh, developed the readers that now go to 100%, and there's other manufacturers that have also got the equipment that read 100%. Um, this is important that we get up to speed and get this kind of equipment, so we are making sure that we know what we're working with out here. Um, the primer that we use with this system is a moisture cured urethane primer. It is a moisture barrier primer, uh, so it actually blocks the, the moisture. Now it is the same adhesive system that, that is used as what we use in the classic system. It is just that the primers are different. Um, it's a ready mixed. So there's there's no need to mix the primer there either. Um, and, and it does neutralize the pH of the floor. 
uh, again, the same peel and bond adhesive, and we're still able to go and install in the same day. And that's important. When, again, as I talked before, that downtime in healthcare uh, is, is ever so important when we start talking revenue. And obviously with this COVID thing, revenue has been a huge, huge thing. Uh, hospitals are kind of bleeding here just like other businesses are. And revenue has been down because they haven't been able to do a lot of things here. So uh, again, uh, this is important. I don't know why this is jumping ahead on me here like it is, but it's going crazy on me. I'll go back here. Uh, anyhow, um, that that same day, that's important. Um, we're not having to go in and, and bead blast and all this with it, but we do need that that open face in the concrete. So again, back to that Dyma brush or similar piece of equipment to open the face of that concrete, that's going to be important because I need that mechanical grab to get into the pores of that concrete to make sure that I've got that, that hold in there. Um, it's definitely less expensive than going in with a, an, an epoxy system there where I have to shot blast the floor and then pour a self level over the top. Um, again, taking days and creating lots of noise and dust to do this thing. Um, we are applying the adhesive on the back of the flooring product. Again, creating that good uniform coverage and making sure that we've got that 100% bond on the back of it. And again, we're dealing with that aggressive uh, moisture resistant adhesive and that moisture barrier primer. And we are dealing with that 100% RH warranty. Carpet tile. Um, we can do that carpet tiles, the so rubber tiles. Uh, that, that seems to be a really hot commodity right now, doing the rubber tiles. VCT, again, why would I do VCT? It's such a commodity product. There are those situations to where we need that quick turnaround. We need to be able to get in there. Sheet goods, um, certainly that, that's huge with the sheet goods in ORs and, and in healthcare. Uh, it comes in a two and a half gallon uh, container. Uh, we get about 600 square feet per gallon. Um, again, it is a two coat application um, and it's rolled on extremely thin. And, and most people like to think more is better. This is a case where less is more. So we put it on very, very thin coats. Um, it does take a little bit longer to dry than the acrylic takes. Um, we use a, a quarter inch epoxy type roller, which is something that's easily obtainable at, at the box stores. I know Home Depot and Lowe's carry them. Um, they're an adhesive or epoxy roller. It doesn't hold a lot of primer. So it also helps put that thin coat on because you can't load it up. And back to the one picture that that uh, we had where Devin was rolling the primer on the floor, uh, you start away from the wet edge and work back to the wet edge of the floor and, and roll it out very, very thin. You do not want to have big, heavy loads overlap uh, because those are areas that actually can flake off when you've got it heavy overlaps. So again, you just work it into the concrete. Takes approximately 45 minutes, again, depending on the environment and porosity of the floor, but it takes about that long per coat. Now you go one coat north, south, one coat east west. That's just to make sure that you've got 100% coverage. So if the first coat doesn't quite cover 100%, not a problem because that's where the second coat comes in to make sure that, that we've got that 100% that coverage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, um, 
we, we apply the adhesive down at our plant in Dalton, Georgia. And, and uh, we do it on a myriad of products. So we haven't found anything that we can apply it on yet. And we've been doing it all over the country, um, Canada. So we've, we've got a great track record with it. We're out there three years with it now. And so we've got a lot of floors down with it. Uh, those lists are available of, of projects that we have uh, with all of our systems. And, and again, here's the specifications of, of where we're at with uh, coverage. Hopefully you can read it better than I can here on my slide because my slide's a little small. Um, get to that slide here. Never mind. Bear with me. Papers make a noise. All right. We're saying 1,500 square feet. That might be a little bit bold of a statement. That's per unit. Um, probably more realistic at somewhere around 1,200 square feet per unit. It is sold only in a unit, uh, two and a half gallon unit. So we, we are not breaking it down yet. Um, that may come at some point, but for right now it is, is only in those units. Um, so again, 500 foot square foot is the minimum that we will put it in or put out there for you. So um, hopefully your jobs will be bigger than that. It does have a shelf life, uh, one year unopened. Um, after you open it, of course, with anything, as you open those, the shelf life diminishes on them. Um, you know, after you've opened it, you've only got a 30 day. And the reason being is that's a moisture cured urethane. So the air that you've allowed to get into that container already will start to cure it. Uh, another thing about the, the moisture barrier primer is you only want to dump out, and I like to use a paint tray. Um, I don't like to dump it on the floor. I like to just dump it into like one of those disposable paint trays, dump out what I think I'm going to need because you don't want to dump back into the container what you didn't use, throw it out. Um, use a paint tray, use up what you think you're going to use, throw the rest out. Um, that's the best way to use it. And like I say, once the air hits it, it kind of, it's pretty much done. So don't try to reuse it. Again, the quarter inch epoxy roller, you're going to peel the backing just like you would with the others. Now you're going to find this is very much more aggressive grab to this because of the, if you will, glass finish that you're going to have with this primer. This primer is going to actually make a glassy film on the floor. And the smoother that film is, the better the grab is. So don't be afraid to use some moisture. Just don't flood the floor. Um, it's going to be much easier to flood the floor because there's no porosity. So again, just lightly mist the floor there um, and roll it. Again, try not to walk on the floor. Otherwise, you're going to have a, a terrible time getting the bubbles out of the floor. Think of, of working more so with an epoxy when you're doing this. Our ES cushion system. <clears throat> this is a system that we developed mainly to go underneath of, of carpet tile. Um, this allows us to still have that, that moisture blocking without a whole lot of of uh, preparation to areas. Um, we can do adhesive on one side or we can do adhesive on both sides um, of this material. 
and it allows us to kind of go over a myriad of sins perhaps on the floor. Um, it is a high density synthetic foam product. Uh, and if they want to put the it, Enviro Sticks adhesive on one side and then use a lesser uh, multipurpose uh, pressure sensitive adhesive on the top side for carpet tile. Um, it does work good for that. It also works great for an inexpensive broad loom carpet. Um, I've done a few jobs on some just inexpensive broad loom carpets with this product. Um, makes it feel like a million dollars. And we did the adhesive on both sides on, on a couple of these installs. Uh, made it very nice to work with. Uh, so that's one of our product offerings. He's still using the Enviro sticks. Um, it's great for uh, sound transmission, multifamily. Um, so it stops that sound transmission. Um, again, bacteria and floor to the next. So that is another part of our systems that we offer. Um, there's, it's just synthetic rubber. To the next one here. So again, it's recyclable at the end of the life cycle. Skip through some of this. Uh, the barrier system. This is a system that we developed to go underneath of like LVT. Um, I wouldn't put something rigid like VCT over it, although some people have done it. Um, we can do LVT single-sided again with double-sided, uh, depending on which way someone wanted to go with this. Um, again, uh, it definitely works well with LVT. Um, I've even had some folks put hardwood over the top of it. In fact, uh, Devin and I have done a hardwood installation uh, for one of our employees. Uh, with the drop lock, it went exceptionally well and it went very quick. Um, and it really silences the floor. So if you're in multifamily units and you want to, uh, you know, go in and Make sure that we're dealing with sound transmission, one one floor to the others. Um, this is a great option. Uh, it's a moisture barrier also. So I don't have to worry about that moisture coming up and attacking that hardwood or attacking that vulnerable uh, flooring product that I put on top of it. So that is another option for us out there. Again, it's still all peel and bond. I'm going to peel that release paper off of this floor. Again, I don't need to do all of the extensive uh, priming and floor preparation on a lot of this these products. Again, it, it allows me to get in and get out in a hurry and, and still get the job done. Carpet base. Um, I don't know how many of you fellows that are on here are installers, but with carpet base, uh, this is really a fast way to put carpet base. You can put vinyl wall base up with it too. Um, you know, you just put the adhesive strips on the wall for the carpet or vinyl base, but for carpet base, you're just peeling this off and running down through there. We make a bunch of different colored carpet base or we can custom make carpet base for manufacturers um, and again you're not sitting there stapling this stuff onto the wall and having it look terrible um, and this is thus the name base king came from doing that so it's easy installation um, we don't have all them stupid tack marks and all that ugliness that goes on with it so um, again doesn't fall off and do all those things. I jump by here a couple. All right, let's get to this. Now, for an installer, Turbo Sticks Adhesive Tape. 
a lot of times when I'm out here putting down transition strips or if I'm out here flash coving and say that I was flash coving and I had material that I was using bucket glue, a lot of installers use these tapes for putting that transition strip down or for putting that cove cap up or for flash coving. They go along and put this on the wall. Um, if I'm going to use it for flash coving, I know a lot of guys don't, but I prefer priming the wall first so that I've got kind of a uniform porosity on that wall. We make it in different widths. Um, we can custom make the tape to different widths for you. Um, also, we make it for stair treads. If somebody wants to use a nine and a half inch for stair treads and seven inch for risers, we do have it for that. Uh, so it's a pretty versatile product. Um, again, same aggressiveness as what we put on the back of flooring materials. Uh, so it it has all of those same attributes. Uh, again, very versatile. Uh, some guys will use it for repairs and flooring. Uh, I'm going to go out and replace a couple of pieces of flooring, what have you. Um, We do sell it residentially, too, for people that want to use it for arts and crafts. In fact, I've used it for some of those things, too. Um, say I want to put some light strips up or something. It works good for that kind of things. Again, uh, the Turbo Sticks Plus is, is a heavier. It's 7 mil, so it's more aggressive. Um, Again, we make it in wider widths. If if somebody wants to go out and put 12 inch or 18 inch or 24 inch uh, material on the floor, and then do a small repair or do a small room with it, um, we do make it that way so that you can install it. I will tell you, uh, the wider the material, the more challenging it is to uh, install this. Uh, so for those of you that would think about doing this, you would still want to prime the floor. You'd still want to prepare the floor in the same method that you would if we were uh, putting it on the back of the material and sending it to you. Obviously, it would save you the freight of, of sending it down to our, <coughs> excuse me, our facility in Georgia. Again, it's all VOC free. It's non-toxic. I've uh, got the same aggressive bond. Um, again, now for those smaller jobs, our owner Devin has uh, developed this machine and patented it. Uh, this is a fantastic machine for that facility manager. Um, a lot of times in these facilities, they've got the custodians out there that are doing these small repairs or these small rooms, um, or a lot of times in some of these shops. We've got the uh, installer that's just sitting back, sometimes nothing to do. That's not always true, but... Uh, we're waiting for floor prep to dry or we're waiting for primer to dry. Uh, we can take this out on the job site with us. We custom make the tape to whatever size the customer wants. Uh, this is a machine that you load the tape in and you hand slide the product through this these guides and that roller that black roller on the end there uh, presses down on the material, creating that hard bond to the tape. Uh, you feed it through, and on the other end, you just take a hook knife and separate the material. Um, it's much like our line um, at the plant, except for this is not mechanically driven. It's all manual driven. Uh, machine probably weighs about 
85 pounds. Um, so it is transportable easy enough. And you can take it to the job site or the guys in the warehouse could run through a bunch of stuff. You can probably run through about a thousand feet in an hour with two guys. Um, it works best with two people. And be ready to do that small room. It's not meant to do large jobs. Again, meant to do those smaller little repairs, small jobs. Again, the machine is, is available. Um, we do have a lease program as well as a, a buyout program on this machine. And certainly just need to contact your, your salesman. Um, it is a, a nice addition for larger workrooms or, or even a installer to have in his truck um, to go out and do these jobs with. Um, whether it be a residential installer or whether it be a commercial installer or a facilities manager. So we've got the rolls, we've got the, the primers and the machine. Um, again, talk to your salesperson and we can get you set up with this and we will make custom size rolls of the adhesive for whatever size product that you're working on and get you all set up and ready to go. And again, this is just basically what it's all about. And now you're done listening to me and we'll turn it over to the questions and answers. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, if the audience has any questions or comments, please submit them in the um, question box to the left of your screen. We do have a lot of questions for you, Bill. So I am going to start with the one that just came through recently. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, what do you do when Enviro sticks over cut cold joints? What do you do with Enviro sticks over cut cold joints? Okay, the cold joints obviously are always a problem, no matter what kind of flooring I'm putting on there. You need to honor those as a movable joint, um, and they should have a cover because they are a moving joint, even though they may have been keyed or they may have had re-rod put into them. At some point, that is going to move. Um, I know that the saw cuts, those joints, um, you should fill the saw cuts with like an epoxy type filler, something like Ardex's Artifix. Um, and, and that system I've found works well for the saw cuts, but that's still not to say that they won't move at some point which you cannot control. I may not have answered everybody's concerns, but I've had a lot of experience with those. Okay, next question. What if flooring manufacturer requires a blotter layer? The only way you're gonna know if there's a bladder layer under the concrete? That, that would have been in the specifications for the concrete to have a bladder layer under it. Did you need more explanation on the question? I All, all I said yeah, was... Yeah, I do. I do. Um, yes, all of the, the audience members simply asked, what if flooring manufacturer requires a blotter layer, B-L-O-T-T-E-R? I don't know if that was uh, intentional, if it's bladder or blotter. It should be bladder, B-L-A. Um, the bladder layer would be in the in the concrete, under the concrete. And the only way you'd know that would be reading the specs of the of the construction. If if that should have been in the specifications of the building, a bladder layer. You wouldn't put a bladder layer on the top. Because your bladder you you 
all your moisture mitigation would be done on the top. You wouldn't need a bladder layer on the top with, with ES100 would be a moisture blocker. So you, there'd be no need for a bladder layer in there. That would be within the concrete section. Okay. Um, Hopefully that answered his question. Okay. Um, the question he said on top of ES. On top of ES? Yeah, that's what the, okay. the the gentleman who asked the question, he added to his question. Well, we'll, we'll move on to the next question. Sure. Um, would the double bond cushion system be acceptable for use in a casino type application? Yes. Next question, is a CSP two to three necessary for both or either classic or ES100 as with many epoxy mitigation products? No, what, Let's see it. go okay. ahead. What level of porosity is required and how do you test for it? Okay, I, I only need a one for a CSP. Um, and, and you can just, a drop of water will give me the porosity. Um, if it evaporates or soaks in right away, I am good, uh, or within five minutes, but a one is all that's necessary. I do not need a two or three. Okay. Next question. Um, regarding enviro sticks, do the seams need to be double cut? No. Now, as far as the one he is talking about, the seams, um, the seams of the enviro sticks are, are all taken care of. Now, the, the seams on the flooring material will be dictated by the flooring manufacturer, whether it's double cut or whether it's a scribed seam. Okay. Next question. Did you recently modify the ES00 machine? Ours is about a year old for reference. No, we haven't. Next question, will this ES100 adhesive perform when there is a dew point issue? Say ambient dew point is 66 degrees and the surface temp of concrete is 68 degrees. Yes, we're, we're, there's no problem there. As long as the surface of the concrete is, is visibly dry when this is being installed, we are absolutely fine. Okay. What is the cost per square foot to put the Enviro sticks on? Okay, that question I would rather answer or have the person contact the salesperson. Okay. It is approximately, because it varies, it varies because of markup with with it, because I don't know if I've got contractors in here who all I've got on here. So I'd rather have that be addressed with the salesperson, if that is all right with this person. Okay. They can contact me personally if they'd like to. Offer okay. Um, there was some sort of uh, additional commentary regarding the bladder blotter question. Um, okay. And there was a comment that said, I think the blotter layer question has to do with wet set adhesive and non-porous floor covering. Yeah, we don't need a bladder layer. Okay. Uh, another comment is, but I think tapes don't need a blotter layer as traditional wet adhesives. No, we don't need a bladder layer at all. Uh, would you possibly need a bladder on top for a wet set? I think that might have already been answered. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, Kirk, I think we've answered some of your questions, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask one here. Are some of your tapes themselves moisture resistant up to 100% uh, RH, or do you have to use another product with it? The, the primers are the secret of this. The tapes are developed. They are moisture resistant up to 99% RH. They never had any water in the process of manufacture. And therefore, they can absorb moisture without decomposing. And, and the primers are the secret ingredient, if you will, because the uh, ES100 primer is actually a moisture blocker. So it does not allow the excess moisture to get to it. The classic acrylic primer is a moisture retarder. So that retards the vapor emission to a great to where the adhesive can absorb the moisture that is coming through and without breaking down. Um, I hope that answered his question. Um, this, the next question is, what mill is the tape, M-I-L? Yep, we have two different mills, actually three, but um, five and seven mil are usually what we use. Now on heavier products such as rubber, we usually use seven mil. Uh, roll goods, we use five mil. Okay. Um, this, class, it, it, this classic adhesive system, 98% RH resistant, warranted? Is it warranted? The classic, only goes, it only goes to 96%. And then we, then we move to ES100 above that. Do you also offer a full site installation system versus factory applied system? We have the the uh, Turbo Sticks Plus if they wanted to do it on site themselves. Um, it does not carry the same warranties, does not carry the 10-year warranty. Um, it just carries a material defect warranty. The only thing that carries the 10-year warranty is the factory applied. Um, one, one attendee asked RH. And what do you mean by that, RH? RH is the relative humidity of the concrete. In other words, that is the amount of moisture that is within the concrete slab itself. That is a, a ASTM standard of measurement. Okay. Um, next question, how do you clean up adhesive residue? This is when you're working in healthcare, um, all these little hand sanitizer machines that are at every doorway, this is excellent to clean up the adhesive residue. Uh, we have found hand sanitizer because of the alcohol in it is the safest and best way to clean the adhesive off your tools, off your hands, any that might have gotten onto the surface of the floor. Uh, so uh, you can buy these tubs of Purell uh, hand sanitizer wipes. And I realize now, being that the COVID thing, sometimes that's hard to get a hold of, but um, that is the best uh, thing to remove any adhesive residue. Can you self-cove or flash-cove with EnviroSticks? Yes, it works excellent. Um, in fact, this is one of the great attributes of EnviroSticks. The installer does not have to go out and look for another adhesive when he's flash-coving or self-coving in a room. He's got everything he needs there. When he's priming the floor, he can prime the wall at the same time. And when he's doing his install, he installs the floor first and leaves the paper 
on the part that's going to be coved, gets the floor all installed, and then he can have his partner, because usually there's more than one person working in a room, like especially in an OR, um, the other installers can be working on the floor and another installer coving part um, and pull the paper and start working the cove in and heat welding right at the same time. It can be heat weld the same day that it's installed. Next question, what are the temperature ranges that EnviroSticks can be installed in? The temperature ranges that EnviroSticks can be used are much greater than the flooring products themselves. Uh, EnviroSticks is good at minus 22 to 168 degrees. Obviously, none of us are going to work in those two temperatures, but products themselves are what supersedes everything and all of the flooring products out here are in a range of 65 to 85 and that is the temperature range that we prefer that our product be used at. Next question, is it plasticizer migration resistant? Yes, it is highly plasticizer migration resistant. Uh, doesn't resistant doesn't mean that it's plasticizer migration proof. Um, and unfortunately, some people confuse proof and resistant. Um, again, it is we have had extremely great success with that whole situation. Uh, there's been very few cases where the plasticizers products have caused issues, but it does occasionally rear its head. We have one more question, and that is, can EnviroSticks be installed over uh, Jipcrete? Yes, it can, as long as it is at least 3,000 PSI. In other words, the uh, blue bag or, or Jipcrete 2000 or greater. Uh, which is the kind that is usually used in commercial applications. The gypcrete that would normally be used in, like, say, multifamily or, or apartment buildings is not acceptable because that is dry and crumbly and dusty. But the stuff that would be used in commercial applications is, is most generally that 3,000 PSI or greater, and that can be... It does need to be primed with our primers in order to be used. Okay, well, thank you so much, Bill. Um, that was the last of the questions. There were a lot of questions. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, Bill, if you have any final comments. I wish to thank you for today and certainly anybody that wishes to contact me and ask me any other questions along the way that please feel free to, to contact me. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy days. Thank you, FCSDA. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. That concludes the end of our uh, presentation. And if there's any other follow-up questions, you can certainly contact me and I will forward them on to Bill. Um, Sims may now navigate to the Submit Credit tab to receive credit. Please note that you need to be signed on to the education platform for this feature to work. If you have any issues, please let us know. So on behalf of FCICA, thank you, Bill, for presenting today's webinar. This is the conclusion. Thank you for joining us. Have, the great, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.